Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. As the recording of this Tuesday, March 1st, February is over. Next month, I almost said April, which would be next month, but February has ended and it is the first day, not of spring, a spring I think happens, I'm not looking at a calendar, but I think a spring happens soon, right around the corner if it hasn't already. I'm not, I'm not geared to looking at the seasons, but I know it is nice out. Currently 70 degrees, piping hot caffeinated beverage. Standing at this, I was gonna say miniature golf course, but this is a go-kart place here on Highway 192. A tourist mecca, if you will. But I'm gonna be focusing on some, also wearing an appropriate t-shirt. HHN Hollywood throwback here. I do love haunted attractions, and that is what this video is gonna be about. At least three, maybe more, but at least three that I recall. Let's just call it three that have gone by the wayside, that have been erased from exam. I'm making a lot of mistakes in this intro, but you know what? I'm not gonna redo it. I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm just gonna leave it in. Take a look at this. There are checkerboards right here along the ground in the parking spots of this go-kart track. Behind me is a very unique attraction. I have showed this before in the past, but this is gonna be include, you cannot miss this when you're driving down Highway 192, going from into Kissimmee or to St. Cloud, that direction and then that direction. Disney World, speaking of Disney World, this chose a Disney World and Disneyland Disneyland's been open for 51 years already. The Haunted Mansion. That is what the name of this establishment behind me was. And I will go into a little more detail of that in a couple of Join me. I am so happy to be out and about. It is 70 degrees. It feels amazing out here. Life is pretty good. And I'm feeling it today. Join me. Shall you? Now this former attraction is being utilized as an academy right now and they are doing they're, they're utilizing their business at the moment so i'm not going to walk over onto the property but there's a fascinating backstory to this building the owner who lived up north rumor has it that it was only open for two years and he had over a million dollars in horrific artifacts inside Maybe when the place closed, he ended up taking him with him. It was only open two years, 1997 to 1999, give or take. I went in here one time. I never went through the walkthrough of the attraction, but I found it very fascinating. I did go inside the gift shop as well, but I never did the haunted walkthrough. I regret that now that I did not. But the original Leatherface Trying to think, Gunnar Hansen, that was his name. Gunnar Hansen did a meet and greet inside here at one time. The address is 47, 4710, if I'm reading that correctly from the distance, here on Highway 192, Erlo Bronson. Looks like a castle. They kind of repurposed it a little bit. It went from the haunted match. They really used the name, the copyrighted Disney name. I don't know if that had anything to do with why it didn't last, but they did. It is located at marker number 13. You can see the markers all along here. Not a lot of people use the markers as, you know, just showing where you're at, but if you always want to say, oh, what's that near? You don't want to say, oh, it just looks like a big castle. You could just say it is at marker. It's not a mile marker, it's just a marker. Marker. 13. The owner had big plans to expand it, not only from a, you know, like an HHN or Not Scary Farm all year style walkthrough, but he was going to add in a dark ride similar to Disney's Haunted Mansion. That never happened. It never panned out with only being open two years. Didn't really have time for things to formulate according to his plan. He lived up north, moved down here. He had a dream. Not really sure where that gentleman is now. It is also said that the owner went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer. He was classmates and even signed his yearbook. Dahmer signed the owner's yearbook. Don't know if that was any inspiration later 
in his life to, to start, you know, get into the, that genre? Probably not, maybe just a weird coincidence, but I find that kind of fascinating as well. After the place closed, it ended up being a country bar, turned it into the castle, and it's been a number of things since then. For a while, it was abandoned. I always kind of wanted to snoop around in there when it was closed. That's not happening anymore. It's been this new establishment for quite a few years, and I've never been inside since the refurb. What if anything's left in there? I'm gonna just kind of drive by the front here. Now, the reason I'm treading a little bit lightly is because a couple years ago, I stood right over here on the road, on this, on this drivable road, and someone came out and said they were gonna call the authorities if I did not leave, if I stopped taking photos. So they're very particular. They do not want you on the property, even though this is a drivable area. I got yelled at and I left before they called said folks. But yeah, take a look at this. It looks like a castle, but it used to look like a mansion. Just don't go up on the property when, when they're open for business. Now, if only that DeLorean was time machined out. No time circuits on it, however. Cannot go back in time to when the, the haunted all-year attractions around here were open. There's only one, as far as I know, there's only one that still exists. And I'll end with that one. Kind of mention that at the end. Headed over to International Drive now. That's where this... George's Music Musician Superstore is. And also, I just feel like I've got a lot more energy now that I've been like losing weight, a little bit of weight, and eating better, doing a lot more cardio. With Volcano Bay up in view up there, and off to the side here where these hotels are, used to be wet and wild water park. But right over here where this IHOP is, next to it was Skull Kingdom. Notice that circular sphere up at the top of that hotel right here off I Drive, International Drive for short. That is very similar to the same sphere that was on top of the, one of the water slide attractions at Wet n Wild that used to be across the street. Which can be seen prominently in a Pet Shop Boys music video from way back in the day. Almost seems like it was the same designer that designed that sphere. But where I'm standing right now is the IHOP parking lot at the moment, currently, because Skull Kingdom no longer exists. Skull Kingdom used to occupy this parking lot. And Skull Kingdom was right over there, closed in 2006. And if you look at old satellite images, you can see the International House of Pancakes. Behind it was a little bit of a shopping center, directly behind that, and then right here, the driveway into the old Skull Kingdom still exists. Oh man, this place was a sight to see. There's the IHOP over to the side. This parking lot over here on the far left is the one I'm standing in. And that is Skull Kingdom, right here between American and Universal Boulevard. Those are the two roads, American Way and Universal Boulevard. Down here, this road is I Drive leading into the parking lot area. But you can see it was made up of a huge skull. And there's that other strip mall over to the side. This place was awesome. Also looks like a castle, but it had a big skull. And it had the skeleton arms reaching out next to the skull as well. Look at that. Kind of reaching out towards the parking lot. Skull Kingdom. Oh yeah, the good old days of the touristy haunts. Open all year, all these places that I'm showing were all year haunts. Now look over here. Here's the parking lot that would go into it. So the parking lot, you'd walk out of here and you go up this driveway and into the skull's mouth right through here. You can still see part of the concrete here kind of broken up. I mean, why would, why would the concrete go up like this? It just makes sense to lead into a skull, of course. I should be able to walk around the side of this fence and maybe get a peek, see if there's a foundation left of any sort. See what happens. Now that I'm kind of surveying the area here. I don't know. Do I want to walk back here? Okay, this is all fenced off here. So even if I did want to go back in there, you see there's a fence, chain link fence right there. Along this side, there is no chain link. Right next to the road, but over where Skull Kingdom was. Yeah, no real break in the fence line. 
this is being utilized here as a kind of a makeshift home area. I don't know what this was, some kind of metal contraption. Maybe that's left over from Skull Kingdom. Maybe that was one of the, the hands? Possibly, maybe? Made up of comp, made up of wrought iron. It is incredible how foliage and trees can just grow up over, I mean, it's been a, it's been a while. You know, I figured 2005, 2006 when it closed. So since then, this has kind of sprung up and busted up the concrete down there. The walkway, you'd go right in, right in through the mouth right there. Not really a whole lot left. I was hoping to find some more remnants, but there was that little circular item. There's some butterflies down here along the ground. A couple butterflies. Oh, hello. Fluttering, beautiful butterflies. That's where it was, right there. Look at that. Just an empty field. Supposedly they were going to build condos or another hotel or apartments here. That never happened. That was the reason on why they bulldozed it. That and the fact that it was no longer an open business fell onto disrepair and I guess the popularity waned a little bit. But wow, what an impressive structure that was. A big skull. Everyone from this area remembers Skull Kingdom if you lived in this area back in the, you know, the 90s. I always remember Skull Kingdom right here. I mean, how could you miss the big skull? Tough to miss. Now, as awesome as this place was, it got even better in the late 90s. In 99, there was another all-year attraction over on Church Street, which I'm going to be heading over to next, near downtown Orlando that closed. So for three or four years, maybe even five years until Skull Kingdom closed, they had their original props walk through, you know, scare area that you'd go through the whole castle with the skull out front. But then they added in everything from the Church Street spot, which was probably, dare I say, the most legendary of all of them, the most popular of all of them. Arguably, that's the word I'm looking for. This one and the one over on Church Street, which is a few, it's downtown. I got a little bit of a ways to go. But, fun fact, the props they had at the Church Street place after it closed were inside here as well. So it was a combination of two epic all year walk through haunts. And here's a few more photos just to get the perspective of what it looked like. The cars out front there, the parking lot that still exists going into the horror side view of the lot and take a look at that look now could one of these gargoyle where these creatures over to the side with their holding is that that metal item i saw over to the side kind of looks like a spherical possibly but that is a, it was like a drawbridge there ah i wish some remnants were back in there i'll drive around the side see if i could find anything from the other side of the road yeah there really is nothing back in there these driveways here been repaid but that would have been where the little shopping center next door to it was yeah really nothing left not even a foundation if there is a foundation over there it's been completely grown over with all that foliage that's the back of the IHOP right there no remnants of Skull Kingdom left other than that circular wrought iron metal thing I saw. From this angle, you would have seen Skull Kingdom from the side. Not anymore. I am still fat. I'm looking out my side window now, the other side, opposite side of the car. I am really fascinated by that sphere up there, how it looks so similar to in that Pet Shop Boys video. Very interesting. Could it have been moved over from Wet n' Wild after the demolition of Wet n' Wild? But I recall seeing this on top of this hotel back in the 90s. So maybe there were two made by the same people or maybe it's just an eerie coincidence. It might just be an eerie coincidence. This is from that video. Take a look, it's above the water slide. 
which is just was right next door to here. But look at that sphere. Okay, I'm concentrating too much, talking too much about this sphere. I've said enough. I've said my I've said my piece. Now, anyone from the Central Florida Orlando area remembers back in those days in the 90s, right here off Cayley was not only the Merida bread factory that smelled oh so good, but a rather large ET hanging over the interstate. A Universal Studios Florida sign that was there for years. A huge ET. Maybe I'm the only one that remembers that. Take a look at downtown Orlando over there looking like a city. When did that happen? All these overpasses and everything, they were not here back in those days. Right here on this very corner of Orange and East Church was Terror on Church Street. A monumental attraction which can really be attributed to HHN, to Halloween Horror Night here in Orlando, that opened in 1991 and just a short time after that almost spawned in a lot of creative ways from the beginning of HHN. They're putting up a detour sign. There are some photos of parades going through this area and some photos from across the way from Church Street down there looking over at the former building which used to be right here. It was an old Woolworths from what I believe and they tore it down years after it closed. It closed in 99. They tore the building down in 2003 and then they built this this big building soon after this skyscraper. But if you ask anyone in the, the Haunt community about Terror on Church Street. It is pretty legendary when it comes to things. But yeah, really the, the giveaway too, not only are the cross streets and the street signs, but also the circular pattern, which in all those photos and videos from across the way, you can always see this very unique little, you know, kind of design of the roadway and this circle here in the middle as well. And quite a few people attended. It was very, very popular with line up right over there signage was up top. I never personally got to walk through it. I never did it. For whatever reason, it kind of slipped past my radar in those days and I, I regret not going in there. Corner of Orange and Church. Here's a pretty clear angle of what the building looks like. See everyone lining up there to get their scare on. But notice down here there's that circular pattern down in the road. Yeah, retro building. Nice little haunt inside, a big spider on the, huge inflatable spider on the side over there of the wall. And this gives that same angle of the photograph I was just showing right there with the little circular pattern in the middle of the road. That's it. And here's what it looked like when it was back when it was the Woolworths before the haunt took over. And another way you can really confirm that this was the corner was that building off in the distance. Back there where the flag is on top of, that building still remains. It was right around in this area where this new building is, where the entrance was. Kind of stretching right along here. A little more parallel to the road though, so probably probably the front of that Woolworths building and then the parallel. Kind of like, just about like that. One of their taglines were, or was, beyond the limits of fear. 23 different separate rooms well, not set necessarily rooms, but separate set builds inside there. I was also reading another article about how it was it was a European project, so it came from overseas, which mentioning the HHN tie-in, I guess it all depends on whose opinion you're you're going after, but I found a couple articles online I was reading. It's also an old crest building. I know I never knew there was an old crest building down here till now. So you can see over here is kind of some of the original buildings that look similar to what was on this side, the Woolworth side. So a very historical district here off of Church and Orange. But this is a new building here. Definitely a lot newer. And while in the area, I just wanted to check and see if the house from Ernest Safe's Christmas is still standing. As of this moment, has not been torn down, but there is some serious speculation that it might be in this area, which would be a real, a real shame. Love that movie. I love Jim Varney. My friend Micah was by here recently and told me about it. Went over here and documented it. That was a few weeks ago. I just wanted to check and see. It has not been bulldozed as of this very moment. Still standing. Let's cross our fingers. Hope this historical movie house, one of the few 
from that era. There wasn't a lot filmed in Orlando. Isn't on the chopping block. Now made it over to another spot. That's a good honorable mention. This tourist info center back in the day used to be Mystery Funhouse. And while not really a horrifying attraction, they did have a rather large wizard on the side of this building that also looks like a castle. A lot of castles today. And I did go to this when it was open a few times. He used to have a miniature golf course over there on that far end. Laser tag and an assortment of other things. And I also went in here when it was abandoned. It is now being utilized for something non-touristy related. But I was able to go in there back in 2009, 2010. Film a little abandoned footage. But over here, this is the thing that's really cool about this is over here is the old signage. And you can see this fake rock. This is not a real rock. See there, you see the little mesh down in there. And it's pretty neat that this signage here still exists. Celebrating the 20th anniversary of Mystery Funhouse. 1976 it opened, 20th anniversary was in 96. Laughs, fun, and surprises. The best entertainment value in Orlando, said the Orlando Sentinel. Since 1976, but it's been closed a long time. I stopped by here a lot. I've shown this a lot in former episodes, but it's been a while, so I figured, what the heck, I'm in the neighborhood. Why not check it out? In fact, the tourist info center that used to be here is it even, isn't even open anymore. And this sculpture looks brand new. This is around the back side of the former Mystery Fun House. I don't ever recall seeing this here before. The sculpture right here off the, off the side of the road behind Mystery Fun House. And of course there is things that are open themed around that type of genre. Not everything is closed. Even though I do focus on a lot of the past, there are things that are open like Gods and Monsters that's in this little strip mall on International Drive. And the cool thing about Gods and Monsters is you have to go from the road, you go through the first set of doors, then there's another set of doors that you go through. Basically a comic book shop, pop culture, mecca, if you will, here on iDrive. And if you go all the way inside, there's a there is a horror-themed bar around in the back called Vault 4, 5421, and it's completely all scary and horror-themed. It's not like a haunted house walkthrough, but it gives you the vibes, and they are open usually on the weekends, after 5 p.m., or at least even later in the week, into the weekends after 5 p.m. And you can just come in here, enjoy. The person that was working let me go in, the owner let me go in and just kind of walk around in here during the day, the non-drinking hours, because they're not, not technically open to have a beverage in here. But if anyone's interested in coming in here, a pretty cool place and very horror themed, and they're still open. It's called Gods and Monsters, right on International Drive. I haven't been in here in a few years and I'm happy to say they are still open for business. But a little farther down, back to some stuff that's closed, the Dark Seance haunted dinner experience did not last, is not quite operational. Looks like they still have some of the theming up here. I don't even know if this ever even opened. I think this was around the 2020 stuff when everything closed down. I don't even think this had a chance to get going. Would be interesting. I would go to a dinner experience that was themed after a haunt. I don't know, a seance. That might be a little, little too much, but... Yeah, I like the horror themed stuff, so it might be kind of cool. But you can see there's a little bit, almost looks like part of indoor up there. Kind of the kind of kind of dangling, but this this was the entrance to it, right here, at six three six two I drive. Oh yeah, peeking in the window. Look, there's a big spider. Really large spider right there on the side of the wall. A little bit of theming left in there, but for the most part, everything's been torn out. And there's a pumpkin down there too. A little pumpkin theming. Now this one might not even be factual, it just could be something that over the years I've kind of etched in my imagination of my mind. But right here where Icon Park is, the big Ferris wheel, former Icon Orlando, the Orlando, or, or former Orlando Eye, now the Icon Orlando, used to be an area called the Mercado. The Mercado was bulldozed and now Icon Park sits here. But in my recollection, I recall there used to be some sort of haunted walkthrough at the Mercado 
but I cannot find just a quick quick investigative search online I cannot find any info that there was at the Mercado but the Mercado stood right off our, right in this little area more or less you know the next block over but in this general vicinity ah maybe that's a loss maybe there never was one maybe maybe I just wanted there to be I've slept since then I have now made it over to Old Town Kissimmee where as far as I can tell is the only active all-year haunt that takes place. It used to be called the Grim Haunted House. It was also called the Haunting, Legends of the Haunting. But they have since have new owners and it's been called, it's on, it's on the backside. This is not the backside of water. This is the backside of Old Town. I'm gonna walk over there in a minute, but it's now called Mortem Manor. And I've been through it a few times. I really like the people that are running it. And I've gone through it. It's a good, it's not, I guess you could call it independent haunt. It's a it's not like a major chain haunt, but it's a good one. And it's not open today because as a recording of this, it is a Tuesday. But I'm gonna walk over and see the, see the hours that they have and see when it's open because I highly recommend it. It is located right next to this fountain here. Right there, it says on the wall, Haunted House. Travel Channel says one of the scariest houses in America. That's from the Travel Channel. As I said, it's not open today. It's only open on Wednesdays and on in the evening. I believe there's a $15 admission to go in. They slide that door up and it go. it's not just this one level. It goes from the one level up to here and then goes all the way across, across there. So it's very decent size and an extensive walkthrough. Now, if you come here during the day and you, you miss being able to go in the house, they do have, over here, they have the officially licensed merchandise at the Post Mortem Boutique. But you go right through here into the into the Morta Manor. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm gonna have to come back up here one of these evenings and and go through it. Two story, two story house. Live actors and special effects. It says right inside there. All right, I was just informed in the little gift shop that runs adjacent that's owned by the same people that the hours are Wednesday. So today's Tuesday. So tomorrow they will be open at 6 p.m. until late, and that goes through the weekend. So anytime after Wednesday. Oh, it looks as if the Vomitron is being tested at the moment. No one's on it. And I will not, maybe they're trying to tempt me to go on it, but I am not going. I don't know if I'd ever do the Vomitron, honestly. There's a reason it gets this name and I don't feel like doing that. After talking to the employee inside the store adjacent to the house, saying that it is the only, in Central Florida anyway, the only year-long Haunted attraction. There's one in Miami. She was saying. But not here. Oh my goodness, this thing's moving. It's going the opposite way now. And that's gonna do it for today. Boy, all this all this talk has got me excited about HHN. It's still a long way off. It's about you know in not scary and HHN on the west coast and I'll see you in the next video. I d I don't know, I just love the genre. I love love home haunts, I like theme park haunts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.